So, are you toxic? How many people in here know they're toxic? <laughs> oh, you win a prize for such honesty. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, well, you know, sadly enough, we all are. And um, you have the fortunate blessing of being in Malaysia. And I know that there's that old saying, the grass is always greener on the other side. Everybody has something to complain about where they're at. But I've been to 75 countries. And I always thought, oh, please send me to Malaysia, please. <laughs> so I mean, and I spent a lot of time in India. After I just came from India, and after I leave here, I'm going back to India. But I mean, Bangladesh, some areas of South America, Central America. Uh, be thankful for where you're at, and I really mean that. I really, really mean that, you know. Um, it's a heck of a lot cleaner here than other places. But nothing is perfect. So we're going to talk about environmental toxins, the vast majority of them which we cannot control. Some of them we can, about a third of them we can. And what do I mean by that? What we put in our mouths and what we breathe. Are we breathing air or are we breathing a cigarette? Are we breathing air or are we breathing a tailpipe? cotton traffic. And trust me, traffic here is nothing in comparison to the stuff I've seen, so count your blessings. <laughs> so, I know that's not you. That's the burning season a la Indonesia. I know that. But sadly enough, you're exposed to it. It can make for a pretty sunset, though. <laughs> you know? Can you see that, or should we shut off this strip of lights? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's shut off this one strip of light, please. It'll make the sunset look nicer. <laughs> so, you know, and, and I've been here before during the burning season, and it's, it's sad. You know, it really is sad, because I know Malaysia has some very nice blue skies. But um, still, unfortunately, you're exposed to it. Then there's the water issue. And this is actually what got my attention more so out of uh, when it comes to Malaysia's environmental situation. So this is uh, pulled directly from the Malaysian Envir uh, Environmental uh, Online Watch. And uh, river pollution, as you can see. And there was a recent oil spill, I guess. This was just a m couple months ago, correct? Mm -hmm. Just a couple months ago. Yeah. I've, been, uh, I've been keeping up on that. Yeah. So that's another issue. And you know, you can clean up the oil that's, you can clean up the oil slick, but still there's tremendous damage that's been done. Yeah. You know, we're still, we're meaning us Americans, we're still suffering the effects in regards to a wildlife from the Exxon Valdez. And my God, that was 20 years ago. You know, it, 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 this stuff gets in the fowl and to fish, and they genetically pass it on. So there's been uh, mutants, mutations, etc. So if we look at this, most polluted rivers in uh, Malaysia. Look at the uh, look at the uh, the pattern there. Yeah. But there are there are a lot of places that are not listed. So, now, this is a really interesting, um, a really interesting table. Sadly, what's happening is, and, and, and the latest figures were 2014, but you'll notice that there's more and more time down with the water treatment plants. Okay, so the time down for purifying your water, excuse me, has actually increased the time down that the plants stop functioning, so you purify the water, has increased by almost a thousand hours, but that was just to, you know, so quite a bit. Now here's the other thing regarding water. 368 it peaked out in 2007. So the water 
the cleanliness is going down of the water. Maybe that's in direct correlation, if you think about it, to the increased time down of the of the uh, water treatment plants, because it, it there does seem to be a correlation. The the other issue is soil. This really got me, and this is published in 2007, and it was a very very broad study published out of Cornell, Cornell University, New York, which is an Ivy League school. Water, air, and soil pollution causes 40% of deaths worldwide. So again, I say worldwide. This is not a statistic specific to Malaysia. This is worldwide. And that is really a frightening statistic. I tried to find some more accurate statistics that were higher, and I, I really couldn't. That was on a global scale. But that was uh, quite distressing. One thing I found out that's specific to Malaysia Bauxite, very, very high levels of bauxite in your soil. And what is that? Bauxite is very rich in iron, aluminum, lead, and sometimes cadmium. Although cadmium tends to pocket a little bit more in, in the ocean. But still, um, lead, not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. A lot of direct cor uh, correlation to uh, birth defects. Um, there's a lot of correlation between heavy metals and neurological diseases, such as uh, along with aluminum, such as uh, Alzheimer's. They're even looking at Parkinson's and other other type of neurological diseases. For some sad, bizarre reason, heavy metals and neurology go together. And I'm not talking rock band. I mean, heavy metal, heavy metals, and neurology, your nervous system, they attract each other, they bind, they cozy up, and then you wind up with neurological diseases, whether it be onset of senility, Alzheimer's, and then again, I've obviously mentioned Parkinson's, or any of your other type, there's so many others. Multiple sclerosis. They're also looking at other xenobiotic factors. Xenobiotic, that's spelled with an X, and we're going to come to that. So just put that on your mantle. Um, I won't get too fancy with my wording, but, but we have to use that word for today. So, you know, we have, we're dealing with our water. We can only control that so much. Very difficult to control our air, the air that we breathe. Then our soil. And as though that isn't enough, we have to worry about our food. <laughs> we have to worry about our food. Now, for those of you who have heard me lecture before, you shouldn't be eating this stuff in the first place. Okay? Because this stuff, I use the term food loosely. There's only two things that'll be around after, uh, after God forbid, a nuclear war: a Twinkie and a, and a, and a cockroach, as they say. Because you know, you just they just don't they just don't degrade, you know, because they're so synthetic. But the good food is affected. The real food is also affected. Now, if you look at these two tables, there's <coughs> fruits and vegetables that seem to pick up sponge, as I like to call it bad stuff more than others. So you look at the dirtiest produce. Let's start there before we go to the cleanest. Apples, absolutely. Now, can I explain it? I can't. I, you, I think you need a, a horticulturist or somebody within that, that field of specialty. I can't necessarily explain the right column, the dirtiest column. But if you take a look at that, apples, strawberries, grapes, celery, peaches, spinach, sweet pepper, et cetera, et cetera, sweet bell peppers. This one actually surprised me. This one really, really, really surprised me in kale. And I'll get to that in a minute. Then you look at the other group. Well, before I go there, so what does this mean? This means that these, uh, these uh, fruits and vegetables here have this odd 
propensity of sucking up the bad stuff. Not just heavy metals either. We're talking about pesticides, even pesticides that might not have been sprayed, but pesticides and other things that are in the soil, and even non-pesticides such as PCBs, the real sad synthetic stuff that's made from plastic for the most part, or is, is plastic. So these are the ones that I would recommend absolutely washing. Uh, get a little bit of, um, I'm sure it's available, here it's available everywhere, but it's called um, Bronner's Castile Soap. Oh, there's a lot, of, it doesn't have to be that brand, but there's a lot of different companies that make Castile Soap. Castile soap, you can do everything with Castile soap. It's fantastic stuff. But you put, you put like an ounce of that in 12 ounces of water, it makes a fantastic um, um, uh, vegetable and fruit wash. Okay. But when you talk about the cleanest produce, I can tell you this. It's easier to wash this than this. One of the reasons why these are considered your dirtiest fruits and vegetables is because it's not just on the outside, it gets sucked up on the inside too. Okay? So obviously this is this makes a great case for going organic whenever possible. Whenever possible. Now we look at the cleanest produce. What I find interesting, and that's why I got thrown by the kale being in this category, but you look at cabbage. You look at asparagus, you look at cauliflower, you look at eggplant, they, oh, and onions, I can't forget onions. They all have one thing in common, a high content of sulfur molecules. And sulfur, sources of sulfur within our diet, organic sulfur, um, onions, garlic, we all know that garlic smell, okay? Um, are very detoxifying. And it's very detoxifying in regard to that word I used, xenobodies, which I'm going to define here in a second. But all you have to do is just synonymize the word xenobody in your mind with bad stuff. Sulfur, organic sulfur, plays a critical role in getting that stuff out of you, and it works through the liver. And the liver is something that we're going to heavily talk about. Our body is full of filtration systems. Can anybody here name one filtration system that is not on the inside, on the outside? Skin. Skin. Skin? Yeah, but the, uh, no, no, let me. No. Okay, there we go. There, I really asked the question wrong, wrong or incorrectly. I'm sorry. I should have said non, non organ. But your eyelashes, your nose hair. Anything like that, your eyebrows, all of that is there for a reason, and it's acting as a, a macro filter. Macro meaning large molecule. But then you get down to, well, what makes it, what makes it on the inside? You know, and, and our external filters, our eyelashes and our nose hair, etc., do a pretty darn good job in keeping the big stuff out. But the small stuff, the micro stuff, sadly enough, it makes us, it makes it into us through our mouths, in our air, and somewhat through our skin, depending on the chemical that we're exposed to. So we have to worry about this. Talk about what gets through our skin. A lot of these um, typical household chemicals do, you know, depending on brand, depending on the ingredient, etc. But definitely the big box brands, you know, the, the, the Procter and Gamble's of this world, the, the, the big common global brand names for cleaning agents, they definitely fit within that category. You know, these are some toxic things. You know, um, there's, reason, there's reasons why, you know, professional cleaners are wearing gloves and respirators. You know, and here we're using the same thing at home, only in a smaller package quantity, and yet we don't think twice about it. So all of these things we're exposed to. Um, I read 
uh, while I was putting this together that I couldn't find a global statistic. This was just for the US. So that's why I didn't include it, but I will tell you about it. That uh, it was out of the University of Cincinnati. Um, newborns, their blood was testing for anywhere from the upper 200s to the lower 300s in synthetic chemicals. Newborns. That is absolutely frightening. You know, and that's, uh, and that's just from what the mother's been exposed to, from what the mother has consumed, what, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, ha ha has had her food, et cetera, what she's breathed, uh, and that is really, really, I, I truly believe that that is one of our greatest contributors to, um, <laughs> ironically, the U.S. has a tremendous problem getting pregnant these days. You know, IVF, um, in vitro fertilization, is off the charts. People are having such problems having children in 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 the in the and it's not just the U.S. But I know that this is a huge factor, and we're going to come back to that word xenobodies. And this <laughs> this was a fantastic book by Dr. Samuel Epstein. The vast majority of your big box, big brand name cosmetics will kill, ins will kill insects. Some of the same chemicals are used in that type of stuff. But yet, you're putting it on your lips, you're putting it really close to where you're breathing it, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and get lipstick on your teeth, do the math. You know that's some frightening stuff, and uh, this was a this was a huge book in the states in the states. Excuse me, Toxic Beauty, and um, the founder of Aveda, which is an organic cosmetic company like Johara. Uh, this came out this came out in the uh, I want to say two thousand and five, two thousand and four. The book. But um, this is a tremendous problem. Uh, they have linked hair dye to infertility and various other problems. Certain types of nail polish. My God, you go to get your nails done, and the woman's there wearing a, and, a, and gloves, and, and you know she's you 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 think she's welding or something, <laughs> and you're giving her your hand. Or some of the thinnest skin is that? Good God. <laughs> and ironically, as the cosmetic industry is becoming more and more saturated <coughs> due to social media, without a question, in the West, as cosmetic consumption goes up, it's proportionate to fertility going down. Also, autoimmune diseases going up, especially neurological autoimmune diseases. These foreign chemicals love our neurological system. So here's that word I talked about, xenobody, sometimes also called xenobiotic. I default to using the old school name xenobody. But biotic and body pretty much mean the same thing. So just they're interchangeable. So what is a xenobody? Relating or denoting a substance, typically a synthetic chemical, that is foreign to the body or an ecological or biological system. We would be a biological system and dumping toxic sludge in the Everglades or wherever, that would be an ecosystem. And then suddenly it affects everything. Actually, a better, a better example would be dumping the oil in Penang. Okay, that just messed up an entire ecosystem. The fish, the coral, the you know what I'm talking about. So that's an ecosystem, and we're our own ecosystem. So call that a bi biological system. So xenobiotics are chemical substances found within an organism that are not naturally produced 
by or expected to be within that organism. It's not meant to be there. You know, when a newborn child is being tested positive for plastic, ah, the last I remember, I don't think a placenta is made out of a Ziploc bag. <laughs> yeah. Might make things a little easier for you ladies, but. So, let's think about that, and let's, let's look at that. So xenobodies, or xenobiotics, call it what you, what you wish, what are some of, just some of, the, of those drugs? Probably the worst one that is taken daily, and I guarantee you, at least, looking at the size of the audience, I'd say at least two people took it today. And if you want to raise your hand, I applaud you. How many people in here took a paracetamol tablet today? Paracetamol, acetaminophen, Tylenol. I see smiles. Panadol. Pa Panadol. Panadol is a brand name. Anybody take it today? No. No? Well, that alone, that alone is very surprising. And excellent. Excellent. Really. Because that stuff is taken like candy. It's over the counter, and it is one of the single worst. And I'll get into that as to why. But yeah, Panadol would be a brand name. There's so many different ones. So drugs, PCBs and dioxins. I just like to uh, round it out and just call it, there's various sources of plastics and, and within the plastic industry. Insecticides, and trust me, it's not limited to just DDT. Um, DDT, I like to call drop dead twice, because <laughs> you will. PVC plastics, okay? A lot of our water in our housing is going through, fresh water comes through PVC, used water, brown water, goes out in what's known as ABS plastic. And um, they're both bad, they both leak. Hormones. Now that's what I'm going to get to. I should have covered heavy metals first. I'm going to come back to hormones. Heavy metals. Um, I was going to put Led Zeppelin in there as a joke, but it <laughs> wouldn't go over. So, mercury, lead, cadmium, arsenic. I could go on and on and on. And there's, there's heavy metals. Oh, well, all heavy metals are bad, but don't get inorganic chromium mixed up with the type of chromium that our bodies need. So I don't want to get too technical there, but there's types of metals, minerals that we need, such as manganese, molybdenum, chromium, selenium. But if it's occurring organically, and we're getting it from our food, or nuts, or seeds, or blah, 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 that's a good thing. When it's coming out of the ground, that's a bad thing. Because when we get these minerals, all minerals, including calcium and magnesium and etc., zinc, when we get it out of a food, a fruit, a grain, a nut, a vegetable, that filtration system, not just filtration system, that filtration and modification system is the plant. It sucks it up out of the ground, assuming it, it's not that mineral in question isn't in the ground at, at, at an excessive level, you know, at, at a normal level, in other words, normal good soil, normal level. The, the uh, plant pulls it up and it gets modified. It gets modified into an organic form, you know, sodium selenite versus. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, sodium selenite, inorganic form of uh, selenium, versus selenium citrate, what you would get if you have an orange. Now it's gone through a very, very, very big difference, and it's utilized by the body completely differently. Hormones. Now, it's been linked, or, or xenobodies have been linked to um, Infertility, because they can act as what are known as xenoestrogens, false estrogens. They, they're plastics from the environment that actually mimic or plug hormonal receptors. 
Now, it's really interesting to note that now in the U.S., there are men younger than me, I'm 50, there are men younger than me who are having uh, uh, BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia, enlarged prostate. There are uh, men in their 30s that have very low sperm counts, very low testosterone counts. And what's very interesting is it is in direct correlation to when the water, the bottled water craze took off. For the longest time, um, that would be about 1984, really the only bottled water out there was Perrier. And it was carbonated and it was in a glass bottle. No problem. Now everybody and their mother has, whether it's carbonated or not, they have bottled water in plastic. And when that took off, and definitely the, the company that started it all was Evian. And I find it ironic. Evian spelled backward is naive. <laughs> yeah, and we're naive. And everybody's buying, everybody has a brand of bottled water sitting in plastic. And it's those plastics when the whole bottled water craze took off, at the exact same time that Fertility problems started. Men should not have an enlarged prostate until they're 70 or 80. You know, uh, women who are 30 should not have a problem getting pregnant. That is not natural. You know, something is something's going on, and it's these environmental factors that are really, really harming us, and we don't know it. You know, we just don't know it. And a lot of it is because, yeah, the plastics are studied. This is studied. But they don't look, how, how can you come out with a bottle of water in a plastic bottle, you subject it to studies so you can go in the market, but how can you do a 20 year study on it? You can't. These aren't things that happen, oh, well, he started drinking my water and, uh, and everything went to hell inside of a week. It doesn't happen that fast. It's that, it's that, um, uh, silent, you know, it, it, it's that gradual. But here's the saddest part. Epigenetics, the genetics that you pass on to your children, whether or not they're exposed to this stuff or not. Now your epigenetics have changed and you're passing it on to your offspring and now they're going to have problems. Again, whether or not they're drinking out of porcelain, glass, or plastic. So this stuff is modifying our genes. And I haven't even gotten into cancer, and I really won't, because that's almost a given. So do these xenobodies actually affect my body and overall health? Well, I think you kind of answered that. Absolutely. I'd like to come out with a bottle of water with that as a label. Uh, I call it, there's absolute vodka, and then there's absolutely water, plastic water. So what do these chemicals or affect the body? Definitely your major organ systems. Air, obviously the lungs and skin. Food, the gut and the liver. Soil, we can pretty much say everywhere with that. But um, they pocket. They pocket. They, they get subjected to certain filtration you know, initial filtration systems, the liver, uh, uh, the kidneys, et cetera, even though that's really secondary because whatever's going to the liver, whatever is going to the kidneys pretty much has, has to be subjected to the liver. But a lot, of, a lot of what happens is they're byproducts of the body going through this beautiful and amazing detoxification process, phase one and phase two, and I won't get into the chemistry of it. But a lot of them are conjugated they're broken down somewhat, or they're bound to something because the body's saying, get this out of here. So it tries to figure out how to get it out, whether it's metabolizing it or binding it to a carrying agent to get out, one or the other or both. But what happens is the body does its very best, but in a lot of cases, the conjugate, the chemical that the body's trying to handle, gets pocketed 
and pooled and it, and it gets um, settled somewhere. And generally it's liver, kidneys, and like I say, your heavy metals really, really love um, the, neuro, the neurological system, the brain. So that is sadly enough what happens. So some of these other chemicals outside of that ring you saw with xenobodies in the center. Uh, and you know, the reason why I put up this slide was this. This immediately caught my eye. Because this takes me way, 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 way back to when I was a teenager. And um, I had to buy a, a remnant, a remnant piece of carpet for, I think it was my second apartment. And I went to um, this carpet place and hand to whomever is up there, I saw that exact scene. Toddler, young couple, probably going to put their first batch of carpet in their first house or whatever. And you know, you go to a, 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 a carpeteria, it used to be a chain of, um, of carpet stores. And you know, they have the carpet on a really, really long roll and they have them, they have them out. And here this child, crawling, was not able to walk, uh, did not look like they were, the child was large enough to, to walk, was, was there, just barehanded, barefoot, crawling on the carpet. Now, you all have, know what carpet smells like, new carpet, right? You know, it doesn't smell like roses and it doesn't smell like a vegetable garden. It smells like carpet. chemicals, exactly. And one of the main chemicals that's used is uh, to toluene, if I'm pronouncing that right. And there's a lot of formaldehyde. But these are the stuff that we're exposed to from where we don't even realize it, you know? Such as, such as a new carpet. Such as um, sitting in a brand new uh, uh, couch that has some type of um, plastic or anything that has plastic on it. A, a good example would be um, a good example would be um, like a desk chair, you know, a brand new desk chair. You can smell that plastic just emanating from it. And all of this stuff we're exposed to. Now here's what's really interesting, and it's something where you have to really think about. If you can smell something, if you can smell something, you are literally, the reason why you're smelling it is you're inhaling <coughs> molecules of it. A scent could not be present unless the molecule itself of the of whatever it is 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 being you know ingested. So if you can smell something, that molecule is present. So don't think ah well I didn't I didn't touch the carpet. I'm outside of the carpet the, the carpet manufacturer, but I can still smell it. But I didn't touch it. I didn't go in there for them safe. No, you see if you can smell it. You're exposed to it. So it's, it's really, really a, a terrifying thing to think of. And then if you look at the bottom, we also have, we meaning the United States, one of the highest rates of asthma. And it's interesting that no matter what, as a country becomes more developed, that's one of the first things that always increases with children. And of course, they carry it into their adulthood, and that's asthma. Okay, So asthma. Parkinson's disease is linked to trichloroethylamine as well as um, aluminum and lead, and then there's other factors involved too. So that's really, really sad. And you know, regarding Parkinson's, um, there's an IV drip compound, it's actually an amino acid known as glutathione. And if one can afford it and doesn't mind going in three times a week, an IV drip of glutathione will take away all Parkinson's symptoms for anywhere from four hours to maybe a day. But you have to do it and do it and do it. But I've seen it. It's like a miracle. You know, a person is full of tremor. They go in for an IV drip. It's expensive, too. It's something Michael J. Fox does, for those of you who know the actor Michael J. Fox, which I'm sure everybody does. Um, but okay, of course, he can afford it. You go in, you sit down for a very long four hours, you get this stuff dripped in, and you're able to do a dance on out without shaking. 
but it comes back. Now, here's what's interesting. What is glutathione principally? Sulfur. It's a sulfur-bearing amino acid. Okay. So sulfur is a good thing, good sulfur. Of course, there's bad sulfurs too, but I'm talking about organic sulfur. Garlic, onion, kale. That's why kale surprised me. Remember, kale was over on... I haven't figured that out. Kale is very rich in, 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 uh, uh, in sulfur. Cauliflower and broccoli were over in the other one, which are also very rich in sulfur. But I've got to figure that out why. I, I don't know. So, dangers of toxic deposits. Remember I used the word pooling? I should, should have used the word the, the deposit. So, blurred vision, memory loss, back pain. Low testosterone, didn't I just say that already? Unexplained weight gain. I should put idiopathic joint stiffness, uh, joint inflammation. Um, so that'll, but central nervous system disorders, that is really at the top of the list. And again, without even mentioning it, various cancers, and especially reproductive hormonal based cancers. So remember I talked about the, uh, how the liver is the master um, filter, and it, ha and it tries so brilliantly, but sometimes desperately, to detoxify and modify what we shouldn't have, shouldn't be exposed to, conjugation, etc. Phase one and phase two. Now notice, fat soluble and water soluble, and this is another issue. Your synthetics, especially your plastic-based synthetics, they store in fat. So the more fat you carry, the more, most likely, the more, the higher the probability is that you will have a bunch of chemicals in you. Now, if a newborn child tests for 290 to 306 synthetic chemicals, including plastics, newborn. Well, I bet the person who's 60 years old and 20 pounds overweight would test, test a little higher. Think about that. So it's really, really, really frightening. Your water-soluble stuff, luckily you can get that out relatively easy, and that's the easy stuff to treat in an emergency room. Or even, even something as simple as charcoal, or as complex as uh, 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 glutathione. But this over here, this is the one that is really scary, the one on the left, phase one, because it's fat soluble. And where else do those fat soluble, loving um, chemicals like to cling on to, deposit, or especially their conjugates, you know, what the bodies try to modify and get out? Again, the neurological system, the brain. Sadly enough, many of these make it across the blood brain barrier. So, are you toxic? <laughs> wow, we have an honest audience. I love it. I love it. Now, um, I believe everybody got the little quiz. Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, you could just take a silent tally in your mind, or if you have a pencil, or however you'd like to do it. But this is just something for your own awareness, for your own education. And I'm going to very quickly run through these questions with you. And I'm not asking for anybody's answer. I'm not asking for anybody's answer or anything. You know, keep this to yourself. But I want to go through this stuff with you. Because you might wonder, what does number three have to do with toxicity? It, it doesn't, some of these questions don't have to do with toxicity, but have to do with detoxification. Okay? And that's what we're talking about. So, you drink soda, energy drinks, consume sugary snacks on a regular basis. Well, we won't go into the nutrition of it. We know that sugar's bad, et cetera, et cetera. But what's one of the big concerns here? Is it sitting in aluminum? Is it sitting in plastic? They all do. They all do. I remember back in the day, 
God, I must have been about eight. I remember um, a brand of root beer, uh, A and W, and it only came in glass. It only came in glass. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like a, the glass jug. You know? You know? And it, my God, even the taste is different. It's and only at the outlet. What's that? And only at the outlet. Only at retail. It's at the outlet. Oh, okay, okay. But you know, I, I remember those days when mm. stuff came, milk came in glass. Things came in glass, but it just weighs too much, and it's all about economics, you know. So, do you eat organic fruit, vegetables? That's a given. Now, number three, the reason why is I'm not talking about the nutritional value here. When you detox, you're going to detox a lot easier and quicker, or more complete, if you're not consuming stuff like refined carbohydrates, whether it be in the form of rice, pasta, roti, whatever, if it's refined. One of the reasons why is refined means there's pretty much no fiber in it. And fiber is definitely, definitely assists with detoxification. Package, do you eat packaged processed foods on a regular basis? That goes without saying. You can look at the list of ingredients and it generally looks like a, you know, a directory for a major city. And not to mention, depending on how it's processed and packaged, you could be sucking in a lot of plastic, such as we like with processed meats. Large fish. Well, fish is good. Fish is good if you can get the good fish. But depending on how it's raised, I'm going to touch on salmon in a second. Depending on how it's raised and how it's caught and where it's caught, fish have this sad ability, your large fish have this sad ability of sucking up cadmium. Not good. Luckily enough, it is chelatable, meaning there are things that can pull it out of the body, but sadly enough, that's generally after it's done its damage. So, so some of you might say, some of you might say, um, well, how about farm-raised farm salmon? Farm-raised salmon is the worst for several reasons. What's that? Well, wild salmon. Why is farm-raised salmon bad? It's almost counterintuitive, right? The reason why is whenever you put too much of anything, even us humans, in one room, we pass around our microbes and we get sick. So what it, what it, just like with poultry, how they'll have a 10,000 chickens in a room this size. Well, they're gonna get sick, so what do they do? They give them antibiotics. And they do the exact same thing to farm-raised salmon. And guess what else they do to farm-raised salmon? They feed farm-raised salmon dyes. So they can have that nice, natural salmon paint. That's an absolute fact. That's an absolute fact. So, go for organic salmon, go for wild salmon, and um, try to keep it down to twice a week if you can't eat the good stuff. Do you regularly eat raised meats? I kind of covered that. Raised meats, you know, raised meats means it's, they're not wild um, uh, uh, range, range fed. You know, they're, it's not natural to shove 10,000 chickens in a room this big. You're going to wind up with a problem, trust me. Do you drink unfiltered tap water? That's a given, right? That's a given. So now let's, now, and that stuff you could control for the most part. Now we're going into things you can't control. Antibiotics. Somewhat. You can control that. But if you get too sick, you wind up having to take it, right? Personal care products. That kind of comes under the, or cosmetics kind of comes under that category. Teflon cookware. I cringe when I see people use. Go, go by yourself, or don't go out and buy. But I'm sure some of you have some Teflon cookware. How did it smell when you first bought it? You can smell it, can you? You can smell the Teflon. And you know what makes me cringe when I see people cook with scratch Teflon cookware? If you, if you have a scratch on your Teflon cookware, you're supposed to throw it away. You know, uh, honestly, 
Do you use household cleaning products? That's a given. Do you store food in plastic containers? And number 13 also makes me cringe. I was at the airport, starving, waiting for a flight. Uh, and I think it was a couple of trips ago, in Malaysia, as a matter of fact. And I'm forgetting what I ordered. But the guy had put plastic over it and put it in the... I said, I, I, he probably thought I was a nut. I said, no, take it out. No, put it on a, on a um, paper plate. Yeah, and I said, you know, and I, I turn into this nutty American, and I go on my rant. You should never, you know. I'm like, okay, stop it, Mitch. Just, you know, <laughs> he's not gonna get it. He's not gonna get it. Okay. Do you com commute during peak traffic hours? It's That's the only time given. to drive. What's that? That's the only time to drive. <laughs> That's a very good point. Yeah. <laughs> Hence why everybody's driving at that time. Um, Lifestyle and well-being. Do you smoke or are you exposed to secondhand smoke? Do you rely on caffeine to get you through the day? Now there's an emphasis here. To get you through the day. Coffee has a heck of a lot of health benefits. But if you have to rely on it to function, that's not a good thing. Do you suffer from stress, anxiety, mood swings? Tired, you know, your energy. Number 20, very important. We need to evacuate, okay? Because after we, after that stuff goes through our liver and gets, you know, diffused as much as possible, now it's supposed to get out. And if you're constipated, you're, you're literally suffering from a form of auto intoxication. And that has nothing to do with your automobile. You're intoxicating yourself. Are you overweight or have difficulty losing weight? So here's the score. I'll let you take a look at that. You'll know where you're at. Okay. So. This is a product that I'm very proud of because the ingredient in it that I'm very excited about, I've been working with since about 96. And who is the person, who is the company that introduced it to the United States? The company you're associated with. Sami Sabinsa and Dr. Mohammed Najib. And I'm going to get to the ingredients here in a second. But the market is saturated with, with cleansing products, with detoxification products. The problem is 99 point, I'll be generous, 99.5 of them all, all have generic ingredients, uh, nothing very specific, uh, nothing subjected to science let alone on anything being branded um, and patented. So, I'm not going to read all this, I'll let you read it as I, as I talk about it. But one of the key ingredients in body cleanse, which we're going to come to, is called Picrohyza Corolla. Now I'm sure all of you have heard of milk thistle, and milk thistle is fantastic. And guess what, milk thistle is in here as well. But Picrohyza corolla does some things that milk thistle does not. Milk thistle is fantastic for regenerating hepatocytes. Sounds fancy, but hepa just means your liver. Site just means cell. The liver is actually an organ that will regenerate. I'm sure all of you have heard of where you give a, where donors have given just a lobe of their liver, a third of their liver to a recipient, and assuming that the recipient isn't doing anything harmful, that third of that donor's liver grows into a healthy liver over time. The liver has the ability to regenerate if you give it the chance. And milk thistle actually stimulates the replication of liver cells, the regeneration of hepatocytes. <coughs> but Picrohyza corolla does that and more. Picrohyza corolla 
will actually help pull stuff out. It will actually help to modulate phase one and phase two, especially phase one. Remember that graphic? You know, phase one's where the fat, fat soluble stuff. You know, and, and that's the that's the stuff that really does the long term um, insidious damage. So we're going to get to this. So it's a role, body cleanse, and its role in achieving detoxification. And look at the, the last bullet point. Detoxification should be done regularly to better improve the functioning of the body's vital organs, such as the kidney and the liver. So we're going to come, we're going to end soon with a program that you could use if you want to be super hardcore, or you can do what you can do. It's, it, it's, it's up to you. But let's discuss the product a little bit more. So what are its key mechanisms? How does, uh, how does it mainly work? Well, it's not a fiber supplement. You know, if you look at if you look at the products out there on the market, they're all fiber or fruit extracts or whatever. So many of the detoxification products on the market, it, as a formulator, we use the term pixie dusting because it makes for an impressive label. Wow, it has 20 ingredients in it. Yeah, but do you really think any of those ingredients are in there in a, a potency that makes a difference? When the capsule's this big, absolutely not. That's what that's what is known as pixie dusting in the industry. You know, it looks impressive to the layman on the label, but it absolutely is doing squat. It's doing nothing. So this formula is concentrating on five ingredients, and they will all do. Uh, they will all make a, a, a clinical clinical difference. So one of the ways is through antioxidant support and um, supporting healthy liver function, detoxifying, taking out the bad stuff. So here's the ingredients. Amla. More and more research is being devoted to amla, and it's not just about vitamin C. It's about beta-glucogallin and some other amazing molecules. Remember, an, an herb is never just one molecule that occur in amla. Amla will definitely help with the lymph system. The lymph, is, the lymph system is another uh, filtration system, only on the inside. You know, it's kind of our loosely called our garbage transport system, so to speak. And that's more on your phase. Uh, you, that's more on your phase two, your water soluble. Um, licorice, mild laxative, hepatoprotective. Uh, licorice has an ability to protect liver cells from being inundated from foreign stuff. It doesn't necessarily get it out, but it does act as a, as a, as a protector. Um, and it also supports the adrenal glands during a detoxification period. Peppermint. Peppermint is going to help support the digestive system, especially the um, small and large intestine. Uh, peppermint has been used for quite a long time for irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, because it has an antispasmodic property to it. But along with that, it will help to uh, support digestion and elimination. And when you open, whoa, sorry about that. When you open this up, the peppermint will hit you. I mean, you will you will smell it. Milk thistle. I've already discussed that. You know, milk thistle uh, clinically evaluated to protect against liver damage, cirrhosis, hepatitis, stimulates <coughs> hepatocyte regenesis, uh, regeneration, excuse me. Again, hepatocyte, liver cell, and then it just helps those liver cells replicate. And then picrolid. That is really, really the shining star in this formula. And this is not an ingredient that you will find very often. You know, a matter of fact, Picrolib, you notice the circle R. This is introduced to the United States from Sammy Sabinsa, and so many other companies buy this. Twin Lab, for those of you who have heard of the company Twin Lab or Nature's Herbs, these are really global brands. And they've been buying Picrolib from your company 
since the early 90s. And just as it says, Piperolib is a registered trademark with Sabinsa, New Jersey, USA. So that's, that's the real shining star. So here I put together, and um, the crew here were, were nice enough to help me out so much with putting this together. And um, I got to get in the habit of stop naming names. You know, I, I'll, I'll never mention Michael O. Johnson's name again. But I just did, right? Uh, but so now I, I need to really watch my P's and Q's and only say product X, product Y, product Z, but you can do the math. Uh, <clears throat> but I looked at three of the most popular de um, detoxification products. And if you know, <clears throat> this one is just, I, I guarantee you it's whatever they had laying around and, you know, and uh, let's put it all in one capsule and sell it as a detoxification product. Broccoli, dates, cabbage. Uh, really the only thing here that would have any type of detoxification potential, excuse me, would be the um, cabbage, chlorella, broccoli, and kale. Not really. And their chewable tablet was, um, I think it was 630 milligrams, chewable tablet. A lot, probably half of that is sugar, so it can taste good, so you can chew it. So think about it. All those ingredients, is it really going to have that much of an effect? Absolutely not. Let alone the sulfur compounds being standardized. Or not. Um, product Y, a powder, soybean powder. This is a for also a, another form of soybean, but fermented. <coughs> and really not much there. Has some milk thistle, great, but really not that much there. Product X, you're just supposed to take four to eight capsules a day. Uh, the potency listed on the bottle is per four capsules. And if you look at it, it's really principally working on the intestinal system. Psyllium, it's on the top of the list, that's a fiber. Ginger, again, a bunch of ingredients in pixie dust quantity. And then here's the pricing. And then you come to our product. Amla, milk thistle, the milk thistle standardized for the Silmarin. Picrolib, if you look that up, it's standardized for the active molecules, which is known as Kutkin. K-U-T-I-N. So the amount of Kutkin is consistent. And in oil of peppermint. And at one a day, if it's just a daily regime, fantastic. If you want to do an intensive, which I'm coming to, you can do that too. But let's say you can do this on a regular basis. You can do an intensive once a year, up to you and your lifestyle. So I threw this in. I didn't want to overcomplicate things, but I wanted to put my, um, my money where my mouth is, as they say. This is a Google search, as you can see, a screen capture. And if you look at the top, the way to really cut through the garbage is to type in the word scholarly or scholar, scholarly. What that does in a Google search is Google knows if you type in that word before your main search words, it will only go to university studies. It will take out somebody just trying to sell you something. So <clears throat> about 165, and what does it say? Um, look at all. Picrolib. Remember, Picrolib is Sabinsa's, your company, your company's branded Picrohyza Corolla. So this has been clinically studied. Look, look at the words that constantly occur together. Detoxification Picrolib. Detoxification Picrolib. National Academy of Sciences. Um, toxicology. Toxicology and Applied Pharmacology. I mean, I'm not going to bore you. This is the only slide I did just to give you an, uh, uh, an idea. But there are so many studies that back up not just milk thistle, but that ingredient that makes this product unique, as well as one of the many milestones that belong to the Sammy Sabinza group. 
So again, this is just a brief synopsis. You can take a look at that. Kind of classic a little bit different, or categories, I should say. And here's our product flyer. And here's the potencies. 100 milligrams of standardized um, AMLA, 50 milligrams of standardized Silamarin, that 50 milligrams at 80% is going to yield, what, 35% Silamarin, which is the active compound in milk thistle and silibum. 50 milligrams of licorice, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 50 milligrams of picrolive, uh, picrisa corolla, and 2 milligrams of of uh, peppermint oil. And it doesn't take much on peppermint oil. Um, there's been a, uh, a product used in Europe for a long time for intestinal detoxification, and it only has two milligrams. And it's in, a, it's in an organic wax base. Ours isn't because of where we want it to, uh, to, to work. But I don't want you thinking that two milligrams is an insignificant amount. It, it's, it's, a, it's enough to do the job in this case. So, for those of you who want to uh, do a bit of house cleaning, per se, uh, here's some tips. Eliminate processed, refined, powdered carbohydrates, sugars, high fructose corn syrup. Every single one of my lectures is anti-fructose. Uh, eliminate fried foods, especially those fried in bad vegetable oils. Why? As I've said before, it creates uh, free radicals. And that alone is, requires detoxification. Use coconut, palm, olive, grapeseed, or avocado oils. Those are your, your very best oils to cook with, to, to, etc. Canola oil is OK if you don't subject it to heat. If you're mixing a salad, a, 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 a salad dressing, which obviously isn't going to be subjected to heat, canola is fine. But that's pretty much where I draw, draw the line on canola. Eliminate animal uh, proteins such as meat, poultry, dairy, and eggs. That's just during this detoxification phase. I am not saying they're bad. Any, any of the staff here can tell you. I mean, I love my dairy. I love my eggs. I love my cheese. Now, not all of us can digest it well. I've been, I've been lucky enough to wear it digest beautifully with me, and, and I feel great. But they are mucus forming to some people more than others. So if you really want to achieve a really good detox, let's say for 30 days or two weeks or whatever, eliminate those foods if you can, if it's practical for you. <clears throat> Use vegetable-based proteins such as um, raw, 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 raw. I emphasize that. Why? If it's roasted, now you're dealing with oils that are, that are going to bear free radicals. Raw nuts, seeds, beans, peas, legumes um, during the detoxification process. Eat some colorful raw fruits and vegetables. That's what I mean by hue. The, the, the greater, the darker the hue, the deeper the hue, the healthier the fruit, the healthier the vegetable, and the healthier you'll, you will be. Consume at least 30 grams of fiber a day. And you might want to use a fiber supplement. Not many of us achieve 30 grams of, of fiber a day. And it's ironic in the, you know, 200 years ago, we were like right around 100 grams of fiber a day. That was before the invention of flour. So um, use a fiber supplement if, you, if need be, like psyllium, guar gum, acacia gum. Acacia fiber, I should say. Exercise. Whether it's vigorous or non-vigorous, why? We want to increase circulation and we want to increase the sweat. Why do you think saunas are so popular, especially in Scandinavia? You know? It, you can really get, especially those that um, uh, the fat-soluble stuff can come out of the skin. Okay, so sweat. Needless to say, drink some fresh water, purified water. Apple.
apple cider vinegar. I love my apple cider vinegar. Okay. Um, put about a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in about six ounces of water, and my God, it is refreshing. If you can take it straight, you're a better man than I. But it doesn't need to be taken straight to still benefit from it. But there's so many benefits to apple cider vinegar. The gallic acid that it provides goes into, it converts, it acts as a backbone to many other molecules uh, uh, that help to detoxify the body. How about lemon? Lemon is excellent. Lemon is excellent. Um, lemon juice is absolutely excellent. But one thing about, I emphasize apple cider vinegar. For God's sakes, don't use white vinegar. <laughs> That's meant for laundry. Um, refrain from alcohol consumption. Please attempt smoking cessation. And breathe, 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 breathe. Okay? And if you can do this, if any of you can do this for 30 days and be that hardcore, um, I'll take you out to McDonald's on me. <laughs> on that note, I've talked too much. Thank you.